What's up guys, today we are reacting to Bridgerton. This is season three, episode six. This is called Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. I guess we talked about Colin this episode. So yeah, Romancing Mr. Bridgerton. Okay, uh, this is like probably the honeymoon phase. Well, actually no, you have to get married first and then you have to go through the honeymoon phase. They're not even married. They're like engagement party-ish thing. Bachelor party, okay, whatever. Let's get into it. Badly brought up. Oh my god, her family's about to get the 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 broom of this. I said the broom, the brunt. <laughs> the broom is crazy. Cressida Cowper. Oh wow, so she's about to wow. Oh wow. Popping it, ain't she? And the other and the other is not known to this Arthur. That's funny. That's actually hilarious. Like watch out. Why is her hands dirty? What is like what is the <laughs> <laughs> well, they say, what is the dog doing? Like, no, what is Lady Feathering doing? Before I go, I have something for you. The ring? Let's see how that Bridgerton money looking. Let's see how that... I can't even speak to you. That's more like an heirloom than like a diamond. But then again, hey, if that's y'all taste, then... <laughs> if that's your taste, then hey. Why is her... Ha oh my god, ink, ink. Oh my god, ink. Oh my god. That's why she was hiding her hand. <laughs> she be getting real messy up in there trying to write some stuff. That's really what it be though. Left hand people like me, you be having it right here. You write too much on something, be right here. It's crazy. Us left handies got it hard, I ain't gonna lie. Okay, things are starting to sound crazy, I ain't gonna lie. She's slowly trying to unreveal that she's like, whistle down. I am sending you to live with your Aunt Jo. Your Aunt Jo. Who the heck is Jo? Papa, you cannot do that. Papa. Do you know you have 30 minutes? Are you kidding me? 30, 30 minutes. minutes. That, this whole family really messed up for real. I ain't gonna lie. Cressida. But then again, this is probably like the average family. You know what I mean? In the tongue. You have many gifts, but cleverness is not amongst them. Whoa. Yeah, she's, yeah, this family's absolutely absurd. Pleased when people take my advice. Of course you are. Because you're like the only one thriving in this predominantly Caucasian society. Now we throwing balls now. I, I sell the club, and now we throwing the ball? Otherwise you will always be on the defensive. I understand. You want us to take your place, and I mess with it. We black, you black. Let's let's do it. I, I'm down. Show us the way. We do have a way with entertaining. Yeah, show us the way. Let's do it. Let's do it. You, she likes he like She said, "I'm black, you black. I'm trying to help you mold society for real. Become the new Bam Bears. <laughs> the Bam Bears is hilarious. The new Dan Bears. Word. Let's really get in there. You feel me? I'll. Hey, look. I'm the one to find this ball. Call me." Call me Black Gatsby for real, you feel me? How are you? I think I'm good, to be honest. Did you sense the chilly departure between my sister and me? Oh, okay, okay, okay. She sensed that tension. Out of grievances have a way of lingering. That's a, oh, I see what's happening. I see, I see. She probably really hurt behind that, I ain't gonna lie. Folks, like, she was the first born, but I was the first dude, so I had to do some dude stuff, and she had to do some girl stuff, and then the girl and dude stuff. Three hours later. Came downstairs, saw you. Gregory saw you. I wonder what Eloise do now. Because Cressidus didn't, didn't took the blame, you feel me? You've been taken ill of the play, and you are all doomed by association. <laughs> That's actually hilarious. That's actually hilarious. She know how to turn that loud voice on. That's crazy. What's the announcement? That's a that's a lot of siblings, bro. <laughs> that's not a small announcement. Very small indeed. It's crazy. Like, what are we talking about? All this marriage going on. That's really my that's really my dog though. You feel me? He really secured the bag on that one. I don't think it's secure, secure, but he 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 he, he did say I'm about to marry Francesca. This is interesting. What's what? What's up with all the scribbles? Did you know she was Lady Westwood? Whoa, whoa, what? No, no. I spoke with Penelope this morning. 
Oh! She is devastated about Miss Cowper coming forward. Tell me you did not know. Oh, they about to talk. They're having two different discussions. They're having two different discussions. No. <laughs> no. Not about Cressida. The friendship was already souring, but this caper may be the final straw. Oh, okay. They're not having two different conversations. Perhaps I can make Lady Whistledown go away. Whoa, what do you mean by that? Whoa, I, I don't know what she plans on doing. I don't know what she plans on speaking with Penelope about, but. Not you underlining the word fraud in there, <laughs> you nutty. I was going to tell him. No, you wasn't. You're a liar. You as a person is a liar. It is what it is. Neither did I. Yeah, you feel me? <laughs> it is what it is. Because you feel I me? Yeah. Because I've writing for the issue. Let the column die with her name, and no one will ever be the wiser. Ellen. This is true. I have worked too hard for too long. To do All what? People, to I do what? To let Cressida Cowper take credit, it would break my heart. What of Are we serious? We're talking about some whistle down credit? Don't make me angry. Lady Whistledown is my name. No, 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 Penelope Featherington. Oh, sh You cannot be both. Because then, like, you're gonna be talking crap about the family and stuff. <laughs> no, what if she end up, like, accidentally talking, having to talk crap about the family? That would be crazy. Oh my god, Lady Whistledown is my name. No. Penelope Featherington is your name. Solely. You feel me? Like, you're Penelope Featherington. For a while. But it's just gossip. Let it go. It genuinely is just gossip. Like, my name's Demetrius, you feel me? There's a different, like, name on this, like, YouTube account, but it's like, my name is Demetrius, you know what I mean? That's who you are, you feel me? Like, like what the heck? Mm hmm well, they say, let's be real. I feel like she's too connected to the whistle down. Of course, it's the music that's like making it like known, but I feel like she's way too connected to like this whistle down character to ever separate from it over Colin Bridgerton. It's not happening. But anyways. Give you your reward as soon as you give me your latest issue. Huh? What? Huh? The one that should have been published this morning. Oh, the queen, the queen, the queen, the queen. I love the queen. She might be my dog. Pity on my head. My publisher has grown wary. That's a, that's a lie. Face me. Know thine enemy, Miss Cowper. And you ain't thine enemy. Okay. I know Lady Whistledown as well as I know myself. Her greatest strength is that she is an observer. Uh-huh. And she observed mm -hmm. in your life other than yourself. Oh my Oh my god, Jesus. Oh my god, Jesus. Caught her a fraud. But I'm sure there is still time to sway Miss Francesca towards the Marquis. Miss hmm. Calfer, you can print a convincing issue. <laughs> I do not wish to see you in my court again. <laughs> <laughs> she really my dog! <laughs> she really my dog, bro. I do not have a choice, Mama. She will cast me out of society. Your father no, she has won't. already cast you out of society. Literally. Alright, so what you gonna do then? Hmm? Lady down decides to publish again. Well, she did not publish this morning. Perhaps I've scared her away. Oh. What else am I to do? Come on, scared her away. Will marry me now. This is some good stuff, guys. This is some great stuff. Uh, all cozy inside, you know what I mean? But, so the whole family is like shy. We would like you to speak to the queen. It's, okay, this is like such a weird dynamic. This is such a weird dynamic. Hey, I'm I'm sure you, you Gucci. You feel me? The Bridgertons, the Danberries, and the Queen are like three peas in a pod. Like they really they really dogs for it. It's, and guilt flowers covering the carriage from the church surely not as important as pregnancy where is penelope unlimited funds attached to that wedding though come on now <laughs> unlimited funds attached to that wedding what are you doing don't sleep don't be sleep okay don't be asleep you feel me 
What dreams? <laughs> what dreams is crazy. Ladies, have dreams. Ladies do not have dreams is actually insane. It's a true thing. That sounds insane. She's always been like, like Lady Featherington has always been like one of those people who knew society. You feel me? As far as like ladies and husbands and husbands and ladies and da da. You feel me? Always been for you three to do better than I did. You have. The wildest of dreams, actually. A love match with unlimited funds is crazy. From Penelope? Whoo! A love match? What? You feel me? Like, but then again, she's probably thinking like, there's a cap. You feel me? Penelope's probably thinking like, that's the cap. Like, that's your ultimate goal. A love match with unlimited funds is your ultimate goal. You feel me? That's your cap on your dreams. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's a pretty small cap. You feel me? Now, to her, to the mother, is probably like, oh my gosh, it's unlimited. That's that's a dream. That's unlimited dreams. That's all my aspirations and. That's, that's everything I've ever wanted in my life. A love match with unlimited funds is crazy. But for someone who is as, as educated as like actually like really, really educated and like who have read so much, who have done this, da, 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 like Eloise, you feel me? You, your aspirations become way higher than just a love match with unlimited funds. You know what I mean? Time to push me up onto a cup. <laughs> I'm hosting a dinner party later this week. For you and me and my dear friend Paul. Will you come? You and me and my... <laughs> you and me and my dear friend Paul. After all, I met your family. Okay, cool. There that you meet those dear to me. That's true. Okay, cool. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Are we about to dive into the topic of like... Poly, what's it called? A poly relationship where it's like three people or probably even more than three people. You feel me? So it's Paul like with the blonde lady too and Benedict is with the blonde lady right now. So it's like, it's gonna be like a weird thing of like, Benedict, be okay with me and Paul and you come over here too. And there, we have to just, we have to go, we have to. With me so simple, I cannot even write a sentence this week. It is torture. Well, what, what do you need to write? Oh, you're, you're in your journal. Like a manuscript. Oh, a, a manuscript, like a book, right? I don't, I don't know what that. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know what that. Okay, I a manuscript, like a book. Cool. Yeah. We've been with this club for like maybe two seasons, like, and this is the third season, so for two full seasons. So I mean, like, I mean, we're saying goodbye to the club, y'all. Well, I mean, have we been with this club for two full seasons? I think it was owned by somebody else or something in like the first season, but who knows? I'm of asking. If any of you know cause or just impediment, why these- Is, is, is this the marriage? Is this the ma the wedding right here? <laughs> that's hilarious. Ask to declare it. Who am I missing that's gonna like get up and like be like, no, who am I missing? Who am I missing? Mr. Bridgerton and Miss Featherington shall be married here in three weeks time. This how they used to do it? <laughs> publish the bans for Lord Charles Church. Okay. Got some black love going on. Declare. <laughs> Not the brother trying to like get in on like her his sister's friends that's hilarious i understand her plight now <laughs> that brings me to the end that's hilarious this is our first time this is my first time hearing them refer to like god of any kind as far as like the lord and stuff like that this is my first time hearing of that something you have been meaning to tell me like oh oh that oh yeah nah nah you good <laughs> you're good <laughs> you're good I have been meaning to tell you for a very long time. Okay, okay. She's not okay. We're good. Let's see the lie. Let's see what's the lie gonna be. An embarrassingly long time, Lord. <laughs> An embarrassingly long time. She all he 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 already knows that, that that's not the actual truth that she was gonna say. You know what I mean? But thank you for the sentimental. You know what I mean? Filler. Your church. Will you marry? Whole time to like 
I ain't about to say that there. I was about to say something. What if like the church just like, you feel me? Just like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I I, I don't know why I thought that way because like I don't know this this TV show will probably like not do such a thing. May I present Lady Kezzy? Haven't you met before? I do not believe we have. <laughs> Lord Anderson, a pleasure. I was just about to speak with someone. The pleasure is all mine. Your arrival has been the talk of the town. I have been so eager to meet you. <laughs> Her voice is wild. Her voice is wild. Can we can we get a, a sister for real? Like like a like a sister sister? Like folks that are sister sister. Let's Can we get like Is there any other black women in the <laughs> in all of the town? You feel me? Like Okay. No, nah, cause her voice was so off-putting. You feel me? Her voice was off-putting. Her voice like reminded me of like the evil lady from like the Dalmatian story about the dogs. I forgot her name. Like the the white hair and the black hair and the, you know what I mean? That lady. <laughs> you was popping it, Cressida. We had to put you in your place. Me and Eloise had to put you in your place. <laughs> Look as charming as a chocolate box. Well, I suppose you'll be back for the next reading of. They securing children. They securing unlimited funds. The the Fellington family is coming up, baby. Francesca is happy, but they do. If the Queen suspects them, she may feel emboldened to oppose their match. This is facts. Which means that, what with their silence, you have to be extra loud. You feel me about like their love? You know what I mean? <laughs> What's happening here with the whole Francesca and that guy? Kill Martin person. Like, you wouldn't like, oh my gosh, I want to get married, you feel me? To somebody who, like, you don't want to get married to. Like, come on. Like, what's, what's really going on with that? There's two different, there's multiple versions of, like, love, right? You feel me? There's not, there's, like, Penelope and Colin's version. There's a lot of other versions of love, you know? Y'all have y'all like own version of like loving each other. You just have to find your languages, you know, <laughs> your, your languages and like mesh together, et cetera, et cetera. And Francesca was like pulling for it. You feel me? She was like, yeah, you feel me? Ask my dukes, you know what I mean? Da 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 da. But whatever. They're gonna make it to where she says, nah, I'm calling it off. And go with some random person who makes her feel what can be assumed as passion and conveyed as passion by the mass majority of the audience that watches Bridgerton. I'm already seeing it. Red hair? I mean, I guess people use white Wigs, people use red wigs, I guess. Here come this French accent, bro. Here come this French accent. This accent is unbearable. I took French classes. This is crazy. Do you want to be Miss Whistledown? Do you want to be Miss Whistledown, brother? The control. She about to talk about the control. The control. It's for her her own. So he about to try to convince her to stay whistle down. Because you love gossip so much, you're gonna try to convince her that she needs to stay whistle down. That's what happens. Once you surround yourself by people who also love gossip as much as you do and also who are elevated in consciousness of like educated, you feel me? Who want more for their life than just to be like unlimited funds and a love match, you feel me? They're gonna try to like keep you down with them, you feel me? And like go against, once you try to go against the grain, they're gonna try to push you back in, you know what I mean? To go against the grain. That's kind of what she's not doing, what Penelope's not doing, but still. 
when you try to like escape the life of a life of gossip and like going after crazy aspirations. What are you doing in here? Then, Why are you not in your room? Yeah. There is no desk in my room. People going up those crazy aspirations are gonna try to put you like with them, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's hilarious. Father was just ousted from his club. Ousted is crazy. Is this? Wow. He's withdrawing your diary. Whoa! Today I bring you much gossip from about the many lands. Near and far. Far and wide. Near and far, far and wide. It is I, Lady Whistledown. Okay. I ain't about to rag on you about intelligence and cleverness and ingenuity. You feel me? Um, wow. How are they gonna discover that Penelope is whistled down? I have no clue, but they're gonna get down. I guarantee you they're gonna do it. I'm excited to see how that unfolds, specifically. Isn't that like her brother's like journal? Do you fill your time with any creative pursuits? Do you write? Or draw? Or... Oh yeah, I think he used to paint a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No. I uh... Wait, isn't that the guy from last season? Who he was like I... in the painting class with? Dance sometimes at parties. Like what? Nah. What do you like what who is this supposed to be exactly? Paul is a patron of the arts. He spends all of his time sporting the theater. I see. So Bro. Did I met. Yeah. She's wait, 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 what? Every week. You know, she is at her box every week. I should never week. forget the first day I saw her. At her box. Was he very afraid of her? <laughs> Did she? Did she? Did she? Exactly that. Oh, <laughs> my, you popping it. Nah, not her trying to play both sides. You popping it. Is yeah, this is like, we're, 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 I knew... Bro, my pattern recognition and my future analysis is be crazy. Like I'm talking about 90% success rate. I'll say even 97% for real. You feel me? 96 if y'all wanna throw a little, okay, 96 to 97%. I would say 97% because of the ego part of myself, but 96% for real. Success rate of like, what's gonna happen? You feel me? From my pattern recognition, what's gonna come to fruition because of my pattern recognition? They're discover. They're they're. I guarantee they're like playing on like polyamorous relationships with the whole like Benedict and the other guy Paul and the lady. I forgot her name. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, yeah. As a reactor, that's so funny to me because like I don't know how the audience feels about me like knowing and catching up all these things way before it happens. <laughs> And I guarantee it was gonna happen. The whole polyanimous bull crap, you feel me? Yeah, I guarantee it's gonna be like, they're exploring that, bro. Maybe you can push water up into my nose. Oh, where is it? You're pregnant, like, okay, stay pregnant and do what you're gonna do. Like, I can't, like, tend to Penelope, you feel me, as like a dukes, you feel me? Like, that's weird, bro. Her Majesty the Queen. You know she gonna pop up every time. Just, I know, right? The queen popping up at your party is crazy. Her hair is so tough right now. Texture's going crazy. Oh, y'all was waiting for her to insult your party to have like something crazy come out this box? This is their, this is their grand attempt at like w making the party better. We gotta see this. What the fuck, Yo. I was sure looking at that thing like, why is that big thing in the middle like just pop, wilding out? That is gorgeous. That is gorgeous. Yes, now we got a party. <laughs> now we got a party. Now we got a party. Now we got a. Now you did your biggest. You feel me? You did your biggest. I'll give it a 7.9 out of 10. You feel me? With experience, we could definitely hit that 10 mark on bro. Wait, wait. Looking from this point of view, I'll give it a. How are you trying to speak to the queen now? 
7.9, 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. 8. A little chaotic at the moment. Does the queen not love a little chaos? Yes, but it isn't wish to wait. No, but I do not wish to ruin things for you. Do not wish to ruin things for you. How would you ruin things? Oh, Francesca asking the question. Francesca asking the questions. She wants you to find us now once again. I ain't about to go there. I ain't about to go there because it's probably not true. You feel me? It's just bull crap. You feel me? She want her kid to have this crazy passion, blase, skippy stuff. You feel me? I was about to say something. She wants this tall, dark, and handsome person. You know how they be describing like the Caucasian people in the um, books? That's hilarious. I'm joking though when I say that because she just she want all her kids to have like passion stuff, you know, passion love. What do you care about? What I care about is that I had a chance of happiness, and you took it from. Me. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Can I ask you a personal question? If there's any of the kind you were asking. You and Lady Arnold have quite a rapport. I'm surprised you two have never. They're discovered. They're, I'm telling. I'm telling you, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. I'm telling you, they're gonna explore like polyamorous relationship. I swear, bro. The wine has also made you rather charming. Let's see what's. <laughs> Let me see. Let's see what's happening here, brother. Of course, they always have like the moon in the background. That's so tough, by the way. It really sets the mood. I believe my suspicions are true. I believe that he's gonna be down with the polyamorous relationships. That's what you think, but nah. As a Bridgerton, he's not. He like I, I always try not to cuss, bro. I'm trying not to cuss his reaction. You see me? I'm not. I'm trying not to cuss this reaction. We were just talking about you. They're gonna try this whole polyamorous bullcrap on him, and it's not gonna work. Nah, I'm good actually. Ah, I've forgotten. I was supposed to be somewhere. Uh, forgive me. Life, you find yourself in weird situations, man. Gosh, my boy Benedict just trying to live his life, smash and grab on some word on some fine things. You feel me? But they be trying to like give me some weird situations. I don't like that. I ain't gonna lie. You feel me? Let bro just be bro. You feel me? What they, what Cody say? They be like Cody this and Cody's that. Cody's me, bro. Let me be me, bro. <laughs> okay, we got some depth representation in the show. You hear the music? You can't hear the music because I'm. Just look at these dance moves. <laughs> Parties I have been to. Shall I bring her to the queen? Whistle down. Squirm a little. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. So much having ops in the party. Ops really in the party. You feel me? Yo, that's that that song that that music is building mad suspense, bro. You now understand why I so adore her. Whistle down and the queen are like top ops of each other. Oh. <laughs> Forgive me. It seems the queen has summoned Miss Carper. <laughs> the ops are meeting, bro. The ops are at it again. Wait, they wouldn't go up to the queen. They wouldn't go up to the queen unless they knew for a fact that they found out who Whistledown was. No doubt. I know you even better. Yours truly. The mother. Um. 
That is, um, I remember Lady Featherington's dress when she came into the party. That's Lady Featherington. Still intrigued. May we discuss? I shall look forward to tomorrow's issue. I wish to see some gossip. But why would Lady Featherington help Cressida? I mean, I guess if she, she has the letters, well, she has, she has the letters, so she would be able to like, like create the tone of it, you feel me? And like kind of the words a little bit, you feel me? The general tone of Whistledown, you know? This is tough. Things are hitting a climax, guys. And now she has somehow written something coherent. <laughs> coherent. Louise, yeah. you'll be all right. Colin's at the door, livid right now. When he get, oh, when he, oh. Pen, I remember my first issue, what I wrote. <laughs> he's gonna, he's going to confirm this by going to our first issue, I swear. I swear he's gonna confirm this. Colin, I guarantee you Colin heard that. I guarantee you on everything Colin heard that. It's over for the whole Colin and Penelope stuff. This runs. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's runs. It's absolutely runs. It's so runs. She's so happy right now. This is where she thrives, brother. Colin probably finding her and it's probably gonna end up on... If this episode is probably gonna end off on Colin, like... Cornering her and being like, oh, so you're Miss Whistledown. Anything for Lady Whistledown. Because I guarantee you he would have followed her after hearing that. Oh! Oh! You. <laughs> no! When I'm going night, I'm going 10 for 10 on bro. I'm going 10 for 10. I'm going dumb. I'm going dumb. I'm going dumb on bro. I'm going dumb. I'm going dumb on bro. I'm going dumb. Like, I don't know how. Like, I've seen, like, growing up, I've watched a lot of reactors watch, like, TVD reactions, right? Nobody does reactions. I've watched a lot of reactors watch all these TV shows, right? And when they would, like, get a, like, something correct before it ever happened, I don't know how I would, I, I don't know how I would feel about that. I forget how I would feel about that, but hopefully you guys enjoy it because I genuinely like, whenever I try to predict something, right? It's like predictive programming. I think that's exactly what it's called. Predictive programming where somebody like, like implement these things into like cartoons or TV shows and stuff like that. I don't know, let me just. But anyways, over the time, basically, if you watching like a lot of TV shows, you start to have pattern recognition and not just pattern recognition, but what is going to happen, the outcome, right? Of this pattern recognition. And so they start to become hand in hand of like, holy crap, you being correct about not only the pattern recognition of you seeing this and what's gonna happen, but the actual outcome of this, you feel me? Like almost exactly. When I said 7,000 and it was actually 5,000, I was like, and that was like last episode like a couple of minutes ago for me, but anyways. Yeah, I was like some, what the heck? That was actually too close. You know what I mean? Like, like first off, the bounty was correct, but then like, it was, I said 7,000 and it was actually 5,000. Like, it's getting scary. You feel me? But yeah, Ugh, this is what happens when you watch a lot of television and not like bull crap either. I'm talking about real deal television. Like you grew up on the CW. If anybody, if any real TV show watchers out there, you know what I mean by the CW. Bangers, classics. You feel me? Growing up on that type of network. What? You you get used to like um, predictive programming or just like patterns within TV shows. Wow. It, it, mind you, the TV show itself remains good just because you can predict something. You feel me? Predict the outcome of something or have like predict the patterns. You feel me? Doesn't mean it's less good. Like TVD, you feel me? After like a couple watches, you start to predict a lot of stuff. You feel me? It's a TV show based in like 2009 or something like that. So you get to start to like, you get to start to see the twist and turns before they ever come. You know what I mean? It doesn't make it any less good. You feel me? Just like it doesn't make this any less good. This stuff is a banger, dog. This is a banger, dog. I literally, 
like 30 seconds before Colin came out the woodwork said Colin would have followed her after hearing by after being by the door hearing her first issue and hearing this and that hearing that she's about to do this and that he would have followed her and he's about to literally be like that's gonna be the ending and it was the ending Woo! you feel me these are some good moments as a reactor this makes you feel good I'm not gonna lie like I don't I don't think I've experienced too many of these moments of being like just totally correct you feel me but geez Louisa's that this is one of them good ones this is one of them good ones I gonna lie all right let's go through the episode um Cressida's outfit when she pulled up to the party was a banger you feel me Cressida being there and the queen being there and there's being ops in the party basically them being oppositions in the party or whatever it's, it reminds me of like going to the club and like there's like this gang over here and this gang over there and like another gang walking to the well a gang already in the club and then the other gang walks into the club you feel me and so now it's two gangs in the club and they don't like each other and then not when they meet up then they meet up it's at the club like face to face oh my god that's what that's what it felt like that's what it felt like i ain't gonna lie that's what it felt like that whole polyamorous thing i already talked about it at length you feel me like you can't fool me brother Y'all on some weird stuff, and I saw straight through it. The whole um, Danbury situation. So we saw her perspective, right? She heard him say, she heard her brother say, or her, she heard her father say thank you to whoever her brother is, right? The night before she was supposed to escape, right? Or the night that she was planning to escape, da da da, da whatever. Or I almost escaped. And so he's like, he like betrayed her in that moment, right? So what she sees is someone who is upholding the patriarchal status, right? And there was never anything to the contrary that he was going to not uphold the patriarchal status, but to like betray your own sister, you know what I mean? To doom your own sister to a life that she didn't want, you feel me? Especially as the younger as, look, look, look. It becomes even crazier because you're the younger sibling dooming your older sister to a life that she didn't want. While you're already like, come on, now. come on. Now. But then again, a whole nother thing could be like, we don't even know his side of the story. Now, mind you, she already said, I heard father say, thank you and then your name, right? But his side of the story could be like, um, there was another guy and he was a waiter and his name was this. <laughs> that would be hilarious if it is like that. That would be absolutely hilarious. But I don't, who knows? I mean, we just keep that open, right? Speculative. Anyways, so that's what happened with them. He looking like, cause he genuinely looking like, I don't understand why we've been like in this fake sibling beef for like decades. Like it's weird, it's getting weird now. Um, The whole mother like genuinely not understanding how two people can sit in silence and still love each other a lot or just find comfort within both of their enjoyment of the curiosity of the world and not having to overdo life in itself you feel me and that being passionate enough you feel me that and that being passion enough you feel me she thinks love is supposed to have you burning you know is there's a certain look to it you know a certain hanging on to every word, you know, a certain admiration you see in your partner, a certain, mm, you know, a certain oomph about it. And so they just see two different, they see passion differently. I, well, yeah. But I see, I think that like when she, when Francesca was talking to her mother about like, what do you have to say? Hi, mom. Hi, mom. What do you have to say? I, I love him and I uh, I think she was just trying to convince herself, to be honest. Or she just wanted to hear what her mother had to say to really confirm or deny what she was going to do in the future. And I don't think she's going to marry this person. It's unfortunate. Although she just said she loved him, I don't think she's going to marry this person. Or the show will have her marry this person, which is fire. You know what I mean? Which is absolutely fire. But if she doesn't, that would have been predictive programming for me because I saw a pattern recognition. Because the show is going into a whole different way of like... You remember when Francesca saw um, Penelope and how happy Penelope and Colin was? 
That's unfortunate. Because that's the look of like, do I really like your do I do I really like you? Or are you just me? Do I really like you or do I do I really do what we have? Do what we have so do what we have is crazy. Is what we have passionate? Passion, right? That's always a thing. Passion and love. And that it can never be just love. Passion. Mmm. Passion is all consuming. Do we have passion or are we just two shy people getting married to live a quaint life? <laughs> you see I me? Mean? That's the look that she gave um, John Sterling in that moment. That was crazy. Oh yeah, the whole um, thing of like, yeah, like I said, well, yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah, like I said, um, mm -hmm. of the mother, I said the mother, of like Lady Featherington, I think that Lady Featherington is the one who wrote the whistle down letter, but what do she gain from helping Cressida's mom, and just Cressida in general? I don't see what she gains at all, to be honest. Maybe Cressida is going to be like the face operation and like Lady Featherington is going to be the one who actually do the writings, you feel me? And have control of like the pen game, you feel me? And so it's like a 50-50 thing, right? I don't know. What's going to happen? And then it could just both be making money, you feel me? From the situation of being like whistled down, right? Who knows? But I'm pretty sure, mind you, this is me like being kind of sure, you feel me? Almost, I'll say like, to me, I want to say like 97.8, I'll say 98, I'll just say 98. 98 point, 98, just 98%. Or 97.9, 97.9% sure that Lady Featherington is the one who wrote that letter, the, um, the whistle down letter thing or something yeah, like that. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, the French lady. I already talked about it at length. Like, what's her name? Uh, Penelope, the French lady, and Eloise, right? You feel me? These are people who have things of their own, right? Eloise, love writing. Oh, my gosh, I love writing and, like, not doing the pageant stuff. Um... Uh, Penelope with whistle down. Oh my gosh, this is my life's work. Gossip. This is my life's work. This character that is more important than what society allots us. You know, us people, us women. You know, specifically. You see what I mean? That's her thing. That's her whole thing. And French and the French lady, the the dressmaker person, she owns like a dress shop. You know, she has this thing. You know what I mean? And it's all about like tangible power versus love. You feel me? I feel like that's another constant theme, especially this season. Tangible power that we already acquired or love. You feel me? Penelope with Whistle Down already having power, pretty much. And admiration, to be honest. Or this chance at love genuine love genuine like you don't have to do anything else pretty much ever again love you feel me you get all the money in the world all the the pageants and the dresses and the you can do it you can do whatever you want you know <laughs> as far as this french lady goes she got their shop, right? So it's a tangible thing of like having this power, this this one up, right? This this leverage in the in the dynamic, in the power dynamic, in a societal power dynamic that really doesn't favor women too well, you know. And so, do she like own the the French shop or like the dressing shop, or do she just sacrifice it for love? I don't think she would ever sacrifice it for love. She's extremely close and attached to this tangible source of power and leverage this power dynamic of like yeah i own my shop 
you other women have to do pageants and stuff. I'm just saying. You can be rich all you want, but technically, you don't even have a bank account. <laughs> you, you get allowance still. Like, you're a kid, so. Like, I own a shop. You feel me? That's her whole thing. You feel me? Some tangible power versus the idea of, like, giving that up for love or da-da-da. But then again, there's this whole idea from us, the, the audience of, like, in a theoretical world, you could have both. Like, if Eloise didn't know about her being whistled down, she could be whistled down and be, you feel me, Bridgerton. You feel me? Like, she could have everything and all of above and da-da-da. Eloise is the one who's providing the this necessary stipulations, you know? Um, yeah, these conditions. It's crazy. <sighs> wow. So uh, I didn't like, I was talking about the whole church thing going down while they was in the church. And I was like, so they all, they, they do this sometimes where they may get it like, they may be, uh, do they even make it random sometimes? I guess they, mm, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think they just like give deaths at random in Richardson. You feel me? So. Yeah, I don't know why I thought the church would like fall on them or something, especially. I don't know, brother. There was this thing like, I'm currently like trying to get through the series, right? And I was looking up like Penelope Bridgerton, right? Bridgerton. No, I was looking up Penelope Featherington. And then it said in like this analysis thing that it says Penelope Featherington Bridgerton. So at some point they do get married. And apparently it's like in the books that they get married type stuff. You feel me? I guess that's what that's from originally. So who knows, brother? So when you found the wine bottle, that was a good one. My dog. He really my dog for real. Anyways. Baby, she tripping. I ain't gonna lie, she tripping. She talking about polyamorous. She going polyamorous relationships. Yeah, even in the last episode though with um, Lady Featherington, guys, there's this thing about her that is just like, I know how life turns out for women. Like, I know the ha the not happy ending women can get. You feel me? That's whole. That's 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 Lady Featherington's whole thing. You feel me? that she knows how life can get when you don't secure a match, probably, you feel me? Now, mind you, she already secured the match, but he didn't even have, like, the whole security thing, so she's back at the bottom, pretty much, you feel me? Like, she had to, like, get it out the mud to get her family name back in the mix, you feel me? As long as, as, long as her family name is in the mix, she have a chance of, like, every like getting back up there, you feel me, into, like, some stature, you know? But, um, it's just... But yeah, that's her whole thing of like, I know what life is like without a match. You know what I mean? Like, forget a love match without a match, period. Like, if you don't get a match, you feel me? I'm just trying to have you avoid that, whatever that alternative is, for real, for real. Like, and she knows that she, I, I guarantee you, she had aspirations of her own. And I feel like you can see that just as her, just like in the character in general, just in her character in general. She had much, she had probably bigger aspirations in her life than Penelope. I I'm just saying, bro, I'm just, I swear. She probably had way bigger aspirations with her own life and way bigger dreams with her own life than Penelope on bro, you feel me? So for her to put her stuff aside, you feel me? And be like, yeah, I'm just here for security. I'm just getting married for security, da da da. Something must have had something dramatic. Oh, I said dramatic, something traumatic must have been really like, she must have seen some things, you feel me, been through some things that was super traumatic to the point where it's like, all of her actual like, highly educated, you feel me, larger than life aspirations, she just put them on the back burner and said, I'm going with security and word, you feel me? To avoid the alternative of not even just having a match, you feel me? And then she has like tried to like force this ingrained ideology and way of thinking into like all her kids. You feel me? But of course, they they not they not going. You feel me? The two the two twin people, the two twin daughters, they not they not going. You feel me? How are they twins? I don't know. They got red hair. Anyways, 
Um, those people, they not go, the, those children, they not going, they don't really care about this whole pregnancy this and pregnancy that. And they, they could care less. Um, I think Penelope gets it. You feel me? The whole not having a match, possibly not having a match. You feel me? And I feel like Lady Featherington's relationship with Penelope was strained on purpose because if she actually were to indulge Penelope when she didn't have a match, even when there was a possibility of her never ever finding a match, um, that she would feel this, like this overwhelming pity for her daughter, you feel me? And so she would rather have a strained relationship with Penelope than be super close to Penelope and then just wallow in like the realizations of life as a woman in the time in general you feel me you feel me because like why is her whole life probably gonna go downhill because she doesn't have a husband like is she not human what do they say i don't know if it's pride and prejudice or something else but what do they say Am I a machine without feeling? I know the ladies out there know that quote. I know like some of the ladies out there probably know that quote, but like that quote stuck with me, I ain't gonna lie. I don't know who said it or something like that, but there was this quote and it said like, am I a machine without feeling? Oh my God. And then she was like talking to some guy or something like that. She was like, am I a machine without feeling? Whew. That quote, like, anytime you say it, like, for me specifically, anytime I say it, it's just, like, it it strikes a chord to be, like, wow, you know? Like, am I not human? You know what I mean? Woo! <laughs> they did their biggest one on that. I ain't gonna lie. I don't know who said that quote, but, yeah, they did their biggest one with that one. Let me see. When the queen read Cressida and says to them, you really not that, you really not that sharp. You know what I mean? Intelligence chase you, but you are faster. You know what I mean? She basically hit her with one of those. To be more precise, it wouldn't be intelligence because anybody can, like, given the right circumstances, almost anybody can be some level of intelligent, but cleverness, right? Cleverness, ingenuity. Um, the, sw the, the suave, you know? I said the suave, the... the the way you use words, you know what I mean? Your diction, syntax, you know, the way you use words, it eludes you. To elude is crazy. It's elusive. It's, it's quite elusive. Da, 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 da. It escapes you, so to speak. So much is happening. So many people are getting married. I'm not going to go through all of them, but so many people are getting married this season. Or so to speak. I was about to say so to speak again. I'm dead. I'm going back to it right now. Da, da, da. And okay, cool. I think we're good. Yeah. So we got through this episode, guys. This episode, that's episode six, man. Down in the books. I'll see you guys on episode seven. You feel me? Um, like the video, subscribe. Go to my other reactions. You feel me? If I'm correct, at the end of this whole experience, and I said that in the last episode, so whatever, but in this entire experience, I'm gonna probably have House of the Dragon. At the very end of all of this right here, you feel me? All this Bridgerton stuff. If you liked House of the Dragon, if you probably have never seen it, you probably have never caught up with it, but you probably did watch Game of Thrones. You know how it be. Um, you should check out House of the Dragon. It's a good show. You feel me? It's a good show. You call, you catch up to it, and then you feel me. Check out season two. Check out season one on the channel. 
all that stuff. I'm going to be uploading all of season two. You feel me? Like all of season two is this, in this one huge video. You feel me? Just like this is right now. All of season two is going to be in this one huge video. And it's going to be on the left of the screen at the end of this reaction. So you're probably going to get more and more like reminders of this at the end of every episode. But anyways, go check that out when you're down here. You feel me? And that's all I have for you guys. Hit the notification bell, subscribe. It helps me out a lot. It helps the algorithm like the video. It actually puts the um, video in front of so many people. And that does, it does well for the channel. For me. 300 likes, that's it, 300 likes. 300 views, that was fire. I can't lie. You feel me? It showed me that they really, you feel me? You get eight likes on the, you get eight likes on a YouTube video and you get placed in front of so many people that you can get 300 views, you feel me? That's all I'm saying. Can I rather get it, uh, can I rather get it, uh? But I do it for TGP, man. We don't do it for the views, man. Anyways, we out this joint. Love you guys. Deuces! Woohoo!